At Gordon College, we're very interested in the pursuit of green chemistry. Specifically, you might say that green chemistry means the practice of chemistry that is intentionally safer for human health and the environment. One of the most obvious principles is to avoid waste. And we've been doing that here at Gordon College for a number of years as we've taken the waste fryer oil from our food services and converted that into biodiesel. Unfortunately, the process of producing biodiesel also produces its own unwanted byproduct. Just like cooking produces the unwanted byproduct of fryer grease, so does making biodiesel produce an unwanted byproduct. The waste that comes from that process is referred to as biodiesel glycerin byproduct. If we could find something useful to do with that glycerin byproduct, then we would further prevent waste. And that's what we've done with the preparation of the biodiesel glycerin byproduct soap. So what the students do to make this soap is they begin with pure vegetable oil and adding to that shortening, which is then melted to make a uh, nice liquid grease. Next came our secret ingredient, the biodiesel glycerin byproduct, or GLOP, as we like to call it. The biodiesel glycerin byproduct was provided to us by physical plant as the byproduct from their biodiesel preparation. After the students add the biodiesel glycerin byproduct, the entire mixture is heated to about 40 degrees Celsius. This took a little bit of time because it was a fair amount of uh, material that had to be heated, so we placed it on a hot plate and heated that until the entire mixture melted, which meant that it got up to about 45 degrees Celsius. This took sometimes as much as 45 minutes. Meanwhile, while the glycerin byproduct and oils are melting and uh, dissolving, the students were able to prepare the sodium hydroxide solution, which is used for the saponification. We used sodium hydroxide that was available at a local hardware store, which was then dissolved in water. After the fats and oils had been melted and the sodium hydroxide solution had been cooled down to about 40 degrees Celsius, they were combined by carefully adding the sodium hydroxide to the fats and oils and biodiesel glycerin byproduct. At this point, it's very important to stir vigorously for the remainder of the time so the chemical reaction called saponification can actually take place. This is very important since all the fats and oils have to come in contact with the sodium hydroxide and water, but as you may know, fats and oils don't mix well with water. They float in water, so the paint stirrer was really necessary to bring the water and the sodium hydroxide into close contact with the molecules that are found in the fats and the oils. After about 45 minutes of stirring, the fats and oils suddenly begin to become different in consistency. They'll become kind of creamy, almost like pudding. At that point, it's important to add any other ingredients that are going to be added to our recipe. For our particular formulation, the only other thing that we added was some citrus aromatic oil. After the essential oils are blended in, the creamy soap can then be placed into molds. We have molds that can make up to eight bars at a time, and so since we're making many pounds of soap at a time, we filled numerous molds from one batch, and the fats and oils that had been saponified with their creamy consistency can easily be poured into those molds. Once the molds had been filled, they were allowed to sit, and they had to sit undisturbed for about a week so that they would continue their saponification and begin to lose some of the extra water that was in them and take on a new consistency. Now, instead of being creamy, they have the consistency of cold butter. Because of that, it's now possible to unmold them. We found that the unmolding worked best if we froze the molds first. So we would put them in a freezer, freeze them for about four to five hours, sometimes overnight, and then pop the soaps out. This was difficult at the beginning because with some of the early recipes that we used that had more biodiesel glycerin byproduct, it was very difficult to get it to the point that you could actually pop the soaps out of the molds. Once we hit the recipe that we're using now, the formulation that uses 20% biodiesel glycerin byproduct, it was much easier to unmold the soaps. So the soaps are then popped out of their molds and allowed to just sit and rest for another week. During that week, they begin to dry. Some of the excess water that's in the soap can then evaporate and the soap becomes harder. At that point, the soap is cut into bars. 
and each bar is separated from the others so that, again, they can continue to dry now from all sides. And that continued for another week. After that additional week, they were then taken to a storage facility where it was cool and dry, and they were allowed to continue to dry for up to an additional month. During that time, the soaps take on the consistency that they have today, where they are much harder, more like normal soap. The resulting soap was mostly made on campus this summer using the recipe that the students had determined during this spring semester. During the summertime, over 200 pounds of soap were produced, producing the 500 bars that were needed for this event.